Let's take a look at how to use libraries in Edmodo. Library is just a place where you can store documents, links, any kind of documents, even videos. So you click on the library icon, which is the books, and what appears in your library are all the different things. And you can organize them into folders that you can share with people. First thing to add to your library, you just click Add to your library. And here it's much like with the adding an attachment to a post. Is it a file or is it a link? Now, each file can only be 100 megabytes max. The only time I think you would fall into a problem is if you were trying to upload a video that was too big. Uh, if it's a video from a website, get the link and upload the link. You have to know where the file is saved and you also have to know the link in order to upload into the library. If I click on upload, I can navigate to whatever fi file that I want to. So if I want to upload something, <clears throat> the Edmodo parent sign up guide, let's just say, and I open it up and it tells me this is just a GIF image so you can upload. Uh, different kinds of image formats, GIFs, JPEGs, so pretty much any kind of file, PDF file, and so that, that has that 100 megabyte limit, and you simply click Add. And they basically are in the order that you uploaded them, so older things are going to be way down at the bottom, and if you're looking for something, click on More, and you'll have even more. Now let's add a link back to Add to Library and click on Link. You need to know the end name of your link and also if you are familiar with what an embed code is, if for example you make a blog or you do an Animoto or anything that has an embed code, if you know where to find it, you can copy and paste and put in here. If you don't know what an embed code is, don't even worry about it. So if I didn't know the name of my website, if I go out to the website, if I didn't know the exact URL, I could go to that website, click on the URL, the web address, make sure it's all selected. If it doesn't get selected, you can drag across to select it, then right click and copy, come back to Edmodo, and right click and paste. Then just like with the posts, you click in the little box for the title of the web page, and it should give me the title of the web page. Oh, in this case, it's not going to find the title of the web page, so you need to title it what you want. So I'm going to call it Joel's Delicious Account and click Add. And now you will have the link. And when it's a link, it looks like a globe. Sometimes it'll look like a mini version of the document. It all depends on what it is, so as long as it's the right thing. And then you can click on it to check on it to see if it works. There are two other kinds of things that you can view when you're in your library. Attached to posts is literally things that anyone has attached to a post. So sifting through this can be really hard, but maybe there was something in a post that you saw that someone posted. It's not just things that you attach. So any post to any group that you're a part of, when someone attached something to it, it appears in here. So it might help you, but I find it a little cumbersome because there's so much to sift through, but it's there. You also can collect, connect your Google Docs account to your Edmodo, which is great, and that's in another training video. And once you do that in Google Docs, it'll be all your documents in Google Docs. And now you can actually go, okay, well, I've got hundreds of documents. Well, you can even look it up by your different folders. These are my folders in my Google Docs account. So if I want to look at my Edmodo Mentors, what's in there in Google Docs, I can click on it. And these are all my documents that exist in Google Docs that are in my Edmodo Mentor Expert folder. So there's another connection. And we'll go over connecting. If you want to learn, there is that Google connecting your Google Docs account to your Edmodo account training video as well. So back to library. Um, the way to organize your library is with folders. And here's all my different folders. These are my folders. I can also click on shared 
and I can see folders that people have shared with me as well. So I don't even just have to be in, in a group to look at a folder. I can go into folders when I'm in my library, and if I click on a certain folder, it'll show me if what's inside that folder. This is not a folder that I've created. It's a folder that someone has shared with me in another group. When you want to create a folder, all you have to do is click on New. And up here in the folder name, I suggest to be very specific about the name of your folder. Especially if you are working in Edmodo and you're working in a subdomain, which means your whole school has Edmodo. You might be part of lots of different groups and want to share different folders. If everyone shares the folds, names their folder math activities and starts sharing it out with the seventh grade math group, how are we going to know whose folder is what folder? Also, if you're doing this with classes and you have students that are in multiple classes, you want to make sure they know it might be a resource folder for your class. Well, what if another teacher names a folder resource folder? How do they know whose folder is for what? So, my suggestion is put your name in the beginning of the name of the folder. Then people know whose folder it is. So if you're in a school environment, you probably want to name it your name and then whatever the folder you're going to be. So I'm just going to call it Training Docs. So once again, when you're creating a name of a folder, put your name in front of it. And Moto is a safe, closed environment. And this way you're not going to have confusions and people who you're sharing folders with, they will. you don't know what groups they're in and what folders they might see. You can also, from the start, decide what groups you want to share the folder with. So if I want to share this with uh, an iPad user group, the Edmodo user group, the Pinsel group, whatever groups you want to, you can check them off here. You don't have to, you can always share them later and just hit create. So now I have my new folder. When I click on the name of my folder, and the folders basically pretty much appear in alphabetical order. When you first create it, it'll be at the top of the list, but I refreshed my page. When you click on your folder, you can see what's inside of it. I don't have anything inside of it, so let's add something. And you can add things to a folder either from your library, attached to Post, or Google Docs. So I click on my library. I can click on one thing. I can click on multiple things, and you can kind of see how it's got a box around it and these don't black box around it. It also shows you what items I selected. So I'm in my library and if I click on folder, you then can choose what folder you want these items to go into. And you can put them in multiple folders <clears throat> because it's possible you have a folder for one group that you use some of these things in and a folder for another group you use some of these things in but maybe there's other features. So you can scroll down and I'm finding my folder and I'm going to put this in Mrs. Worst Training Stocks, and maybe I want them in some other folders like the resources for blended learning. So I could check it off as well. And then you just hit apply. So now if I go back to, now I go to Mrs. Worst's Training Docs, my items are in it. And if you want to, it says drop and drag items. So if you don't like the order, you can just click and kind of move them around into different spots and just reorder them so they can be where you want them to be. Okay. <clears throat> also, like I mentioned, the attached to post piece, these are anything that is attached to post. You can click on something and it's the same thing. Well, what folder do you want it to be in? And you can pick your folders. You cannot put things in other people's folders. You can only put items in your folders. And when you attach your account to Google Docs, you can put anything from your Google Docs in one of your folders. So usually it's easier to go and find the specific folder and then you can click on a document <clears throat> and click on folder and find the folder that you want to put in and check it off and hit apply. So if it's a document <clears throat> like it's asking me, this happens in Google Docs, you can also make it read only if you don't want people to be able to edit or you can click on allow editing and have people edit the folder, I mean edit the document. So once again, things from your library, attach post, Google Docs, you just choose which thing that you want and click on folder 
choose the folders and see how it shows me what folders it's already in so you can't by accident put it in twice because it's already in there and click apply and that's really pretty much it for folders oh actually let me show you I think that's all I want to show you library oh you can also filter what's in the library by type of document is it a file or is it a link and you have different views list view or just the general view and that's pretty much it one more thing <clears throat> if you don't share a folder with a group earlier when you first create the folder all you have to do is click on the folder you want to share and go up here to the icon with the little people click on the arrow and you've got choices so you can just check off whatever groups you want to check there is no saving, you just check off and make sure there's a check mark. It will show you all the groups that you're a member of. Yes, I've got a lot of groups going on here. A lot of groups that you're a member of. You can also make the folder public, which basically means someone outside of Edmodo could see this and what's in the folder. So you could give them this URL, this web address. So, And you can do this at any time, <clears throat> whenever you want. Another thing is little gear you can edit the name and I'm serious about the name you should put your name and in front of the name of the folder and have an identifier because you'll be in a lot of groups and you can share folders with all your groups and like I said before you don't want if you make a folder called math resources and so does someone else they'll both appear but how will you know whose is what and it makes it a lot easier for your students and the other people in the group you also can delete a folder if you want to delete a folder. And that's it for folders.